Hi guys, it's Vin with Boris Effects, and in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how the latest updates to BCC Remover not only speed up your workflow, but also provide phenomenal results. Okay, so here we are inside of Resolve, and as you can see, I have a clip of my actress here. And what we're going to do is look at two of the primary removal modes inside of Remover, Spot Removal and Clone Shape Removal. Now with my actress here, I'm going to want to touch up some minor blemishes, in this case, her mole right here. Now to do this, I'm going to go to my Image Restoration Unit and drop BCC Remover into a new node. Now it's important to note that while I'm working in Resolve, Remover is available in all supported hosts. So if you work in AE, Premiere, Vegas, Avid, not to worry. Everything you see me do here can also be done in those hosts, but for today, We'll look at how to go about cleaning up this footage in Resolve. Okay, so once I've applied Remover, you'll see that I have these on-screen widgets here. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, Remover is currently working as a spot clone remover. And what I mean by this is that I can set my source and clone destination points, and what it's doing isn't, like Mocha Pro, inserting something new. It's basically cloning all the pixels in our source and placing them onto our destination. Now, if you want to do something more complex, for example, an insert, replacement, or an object removal, that's a time when you're going to want to use Mocha Pro. But for something like this, where we're just using existing pixels to remove something in a scene, Remover is the ideal tool. Now, one of the updates in Continuum 2020 are these on-screen widgets. They allow me to control the position, scale, feathering, and rotation of the clone source and destination. Now this is really handy because it allows me to make all of my changes without having to take my eyes off my footage. I can still update the parameters manually, but with the updated widgets the process has been streamlined and it is much easier to get the results that I want. Now you'll notice that while I have full control over my source point, my destination point remains locked at a relative distance. This is handy if I'm using the spot clone to remove an object that doesn't move, for example along the surface of a wall. But here, we're working with a person's face, so in addition to any camera movements, there are subtle facial movements. To get a good clone replacement, I'm going to come over to my clone group and change the offset mode to absolute. This allows me to manually set the positions of the source and destination points independently of each other. Their positions in relation to each other will no longer be relative, allowing me to have full control over each of them. And while that is helpful in fine-tuning my positions, you'll notice that there's still an issue of movement. As she turns her head, we start to lose the illusion, and can clearly see the clone spot drifting. To solve this, we're going to do a little motion tracking with the built-in Mocha Parameter Tracker. Now what I'll do is I'll come down to my Mocha Motion Tracker group and launch Mocha. When I do, you'll see that Mocha has two search areas, one for our source and one for our destination. In addition to the search areas, I can manually set the location of my tracker points here. Now it's important to note the difference between the crosshairs and the search areas. The search areas are only a way for Mocha to track the movement of pixels in the scene. Now I know that I'm going to want to position my trackers here, above her mole and nearby. This is going to tell Mocha to track the subtle movements of her face. But if I don't position my trackers there, then when I close out of Mocha, you can see that my source and destination points jump to the wrong location. They will always lock to the positions of the tracker points, not the search area. Remember this, for best results, what I want to do is position my destination tracker above her mole and the source tracker right here. When I'm comfortable with my positioning, I'll come over here and hit track to let Mocha do its thing. When satisfied, I'll hit apply, and there you go. Now if I play that back, I can see that my spot remove tracks along nicely but I still need to make a few adjustments. I have a very harsh edge here, so I'm going to adjust my feathering to blend that in a bit, and then let's do something about the color differences here. Now we'll see this on a larger scale in just a moment, but if I want to adjust the coloring here to pull a much better match to my spot clone, I can go into my clone subgroup and pull back on the color parameter. This is going to pull Luma from the destination point and allow me to blend things in nicely. Again, we're going to look at this in greater detail in just a moment, but you can see that if I play that back, I get a nice remove that blends seamlessly with my footage. And the great thing about the Spot Clone tool in Remover is that I can use this for all kinds of image restoration. I can use it to clear up the blemishes on her cheek here, 
or the little imperfections in her skin up here. It's a really versatile tool for cleaning up little details. But what if I have a bigger area that I need to clean up? Take, for example, our actors here. She has these deep lines around her eyes. What if I wanted to smooth those out? Well, Remover can make short work of that too. To begin with, just as before, I'm going to go to my Image Remover unit and drop Remover into a new node. Now, as before, I have my Spot Clone widgets here, and if I switch the mode to Absolute, I can make the necessary adjustments. But the problem is, we have an irregular shape here, so no matter what I do, Spot Clone isn't going to work for me. I need to be able to define the shape I want to clone, and to do that, I'm going to come over to my removal method and change that to clone shape. When I do, I get a brand new on-screen widget and a message that I need to launch Pixel Chooser. Now, unlike before, Mocha Motion Tracker is no longer available to me because I'm no longer working with the clone source and destinations. But I do gain access to Mocha Pixel Chooser, which will allow me to create and track a mask that I can use as my clone shape. To see how this works, I'm going to go down and launch Mocha Pixel Chooser. And as before, this will launch the Mocha UI. But you'll notice that my stage is empty. I have to create the mask myself. So to do this, I'm going to go up to the X-Spline tool and quickly create a little crescent-shaped mask under her eye. We'll take one eye at a time, so for now, let's focus on her left eye. Now the mask doesn't have to be perfect, and it doesn't have to be all-encompassing. In fact, it's better if we leave some areas of wrinkles. The idea is we're going to reduce her fine lines and wrinkles, not completely remove everything. If we do, she'll look fake and drift a little bit towards the uncanny valley. So let's just focus on this area here. When satisfied, as before, I'll hit the track buttons and let Mocha do its thing. And as you can see, Mocha tracks the mask with her facial movement. Now when I apply that back to the host, I can use this on-screen widget to position the clone shape so that I get something a bit less wrinkled. Now obviously this creates a pretty harsh line around the mask, so I will want to feather that out. But you'll notice that I don't have a feather widget available to me the way I did earlier. This is because the mask that we're using is entirely generated by Mocha Pixel Chooser. So to feather this out, I'll open up my mask group in Pixel Chooser and adjust my feathering there until I'm satisfied. Now that's looking pretty good. But as before, we have some shadowing issues going on here. So I want to make sure that I blend it a bit more. And that's where our color and detail parameter comes in very handy. As before, the color parameter will pull Luma from the destination while the detail is going to pull in chroma from the source. By adjusting these parameters, I can pull back on the dark shadows while leaving some of the natural skin textures and lines present. This is definitely something that takes a bit of finessing, because as I mentioned before, what you don't want is to completely wipe out all of the detail, otherwise it'll create a flat, plastic look that isn't very realistic. Keep making small adjustments to the color and detail until you're satisfied with your look. Now I'm doing this on the fly as part of this tutorial, but one of the great things about Continuum is the ability to create user-defined presets. This makes it easier if, say, my effects editor is working in After Effects, but I need to pull the effect into Resolve for a final grade. So earlier, I spent a while tweaking this and saved a preset which I can load simply by going to the Load Preset dropdown and opening that file. And there you go! Now this preset was actually created in Avid, but as you can see, it easily loads into my Resolve Color Timeline, allowing me to pass effects created in one host onto another without having to render a file out. Now what about her right eye? Well that's easy. Simply add another remover node to our tree, select Clone Shape, Launch Pixel Chooser, and create a mask just as before. You can use an existing preset to set your color and detail options or you can manually finesse them the way we did earlier. When done, we'll play that back, and that's all there is to it. I'm Vin Morreale with Boris Effects, and for more great tutorials, don't forget to check out the Boris Effects website. Take care.